join me earlier in the week for our Tuesday night Zoom class. Um, it's one of those weeks where I haven't been in person very much because of all the snow. Um, but we're working on the wide leg forward folding posture today. Um, Sanskrit words are prasarita padottanasana, big mouthful, but it may, basically means like intense wide leg stretch, something to that effect. <clears throat> it can be really challenging if we have a lot of tightness in our back chain. So particularly like if we have tightness in our hamstrings, forward folding in general can be really tough. Um, and it can really affect our lower back. So we have to, you know, modify and, you know, make some adaptations. Today we'll do the kind of more gentle version <clears throat> of things. So we think about bending our knees when we do forward folds, if we have that tightness in the back chain. It's going to help us keep more integrity in our spine as we forward fold, because the more tightness we have, especially in those hamstrings, we're gonna to tend to round our backs a lot when we come into those folds. And I would much prefer to see you guys keep your knees bent and keep a more straight spine than have your legs straight and then have a big hump in your back. Not so healthy for the discs to do that. So I encourage you guys to you know think about your own body and what works for you. And I'll be giving you cues throughout to you know remind you of those things. We're gonna you know, work to open up some different parts of the body to prepare. Um, we've talked before about we have how we have a whole back chain of fascia that includes the foot. So if you get plantar fasciitis, um, you may have some tightness in that back chain all the way up the leg and then through your spine and it goes all the way up your head and into your eye, like inner corners of your eyes. So that fascia goes through that whole back chain. And when we try to forward fold, if that's tight in the back, it's really going to limit us. So we'll work on, you know, a little bit of opening up the feet, opening up the backs of the legs. And also, you know, we might not think about it in this pose, but the outer hips are a piece of the puzzle because if any of those muscles around the legs are tight, um, it's going to inhibit our ability to kind of tip the pelvis into mm -hmm. a forward fold. And that needs to happen so that we're keeping that integrity of the spine. So if we're not tipping our pelvis, we're going to tend to round the lower back. And that's like the big risk factor in a pose like this, you know, is making sure we keep our lower back safe. We're also going to work on uh, strengthening the outer legs. And you'll see we're going to work with a strap. So I do hope everyone has um, some kind of strap at home. Um, if you don't, you're going to just be able to do everything without it, but it will be helpful to have one. Um, so the strap we'll use to learn to engage the outer legs, which can help us release more into the forward fold. So um, any questions about that? And I mean, if you know this pose is challenging for you, um, maybe let me know. We can we can uh, work on that for you. So any questions, comments? All right. So I'll go ahead and mute everybody and we're gonna head to our mats. We're gonna come on our backs. I have a blanket down as I usually do. Um, have your strap nearby and do put a loop in your strap. And the, the loop is gonna be about medium to begin. So not a real small loop, but not a giant loop. So kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, <clears throat> I would say about like if when you stand outer hips distance of the legs, that's about how big we want that strap. Okay, so I'm going to do the mute and head back to the mat. Of course, if you have any questions throughout practice, feel free to unmute yourself and let me know. Okay. So go ahead and come down onto your back. And we'll start with our feet flat, knees bent, and keep that strap within reach. And I apologize, there is a little bit of a glare once I come back here because it's so white outside that it's not going to be super um, bright in here. So I hope everyone can see me okay. All right. Actually, let's do bound angles. So if you have your blocks, let's do that. So feet together and knees apart. And if you want to, you can put your blocks under your knees. So let's go ahead and begin in that position. 
So that starts to open up the inner leg, and that's another piece of the puzzle in the pose we're doing today. And we'll come into our breathing. So I'm gonna sit up, but you guys come into bound angle. Oh, look at you guys. I can see most of you today. That's so nice. Okay. So coming into your nice diaphragmatic breathing. Which when we shift the nervous system a little bit, that's going to be part of what helps us release the um, tightness in the body that some of us experience. Um, if we are, let's say, the vata body type, so you guys have heard me talk about Ayurveda in the past, that's a, um, a person who's kind of more on the taller side, the thinner side, it's a vata body type will tend to have a little more tightness in that back chain because it's just, there's just more, there's longer bones and all those things. Um, but it can happen at it, you know, anyone, even, you know, those of us who are not bought to body types, a little shorter. Um, so I see it in all different body types, but it is more prevalent in the bottom body type. <clears throat> so let's slow the breath down, take about three more breaths. And of course, if you're not comfortable with your legs in this position, um, feel free to make a change. If you can get that breath to go all the way down to the lower belly, maybe even a sense of breathing down into the pelvic floor. Okay, we're going to take the blocks away and bring the feet flat. And we're going to go for the slow burn today. So this is the one where we really slowly open the legs. I know it's not everyone's favorite, but it's really good for bringing awareness to the muscles of the inner and outer legs. So you could walk your feet just a little closer together and start to very slowly drop your knees apart. And we're just going to go really slow motion. And keep breathing. Eventually those knees start to open up a little bit. Maybe we start to roll onto the pinky edges of the feet. And then just keep going really slowly. And keep breathing. We're starting to open up that adductor region, the inner thigh, and the inner thigh also connects to the psoas, which is a muscle that will, the hip flexor part of the psoas helps us fold forward, so we're opening that up. And then eventually those knees come all the way open. And as they come all the way open, notice what it feels like for you in those inner thighs. Is there a tightness there? Is there a limitation? You might also notice your outer hips, your outer glutes. So anytime we take the legs open like this, it's called external rotation. And the outer hip muscles are muscles called external rotators. So they need to engage a little bit in order to open the legs up. Now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna come up really slowly. Imagine there's a 10 pound weight on your inner thighs. So you have a little bit of resistance and it's not so easy to bring those knees up. We're gonna go really slowly. And now we're engaging the inner thighs might even feel a little bit of tone in the lower legs. So just notice for you what you're feeling, <clears throat> but targeting those inner thighs. We're over about maybe two thirds of the way there. Eventually we're gonna start to bring those feet flat and come back up to start. Okay, drop just the right knee out to the side. 
Now we'll do a little resistance work again to kind of work on these muscles. Flex the foot just gently and then press the foot down into the floor. And as you press the foot down, you'll notice those external muscles engaging. And then when you press that outer edge of the foot into the floor, we're also gonna now drag the foot isometrically to the right. And you don't have to actually move it. Isometric means you're in place. And then notice how that fires that outer hip muscle a little bit more and then relax it. And notice the difference when you relax it, those muscles let go. Let's do that another round. Press the pinky edge of your foot down, a little bit of a flex to the foot, and now start to drag the foot isometrically to the right and feel those muscles engage. So when we engage the outer hip muscles, it opens the inner thigh muscle. Relax, and then bring that foot back up. So we have a lot of reciprocal muscles in our body. They're kind of pairs. And these are some pairs here, the inner and outer leg. We also have a pair of the front and the back of the leg so that when one side engages, the other side releases and or stretches. Let's try that on the other side. So drop the left knee out to the side. And then flex the foot a little bit and press the pinky edge of the foot into the ground. And then isometrically drag that foot toward the left without moving it. And you're gonna notice probably one side is a little different than the other. And then relax. So I feel like my right side fires a lot better than my left side. So I'm right side dominant, probably the reason why. Let's do that again. Flex the foot, press the foot down, drag it isometrically to the left. Our biceps and triceps are another pair of muscles that when the bicep engages, the tricep is lengthening. So a lot of these muscles we can work to, uh, together to help them work more efficiently. Bring that foot back to neutral and knee back up and take a pause. Now let's try both at the same time. Drop both knees open, flex the feet a little bit, press the pinky edges of the feet down, and drag the feet apart isometrically. Now you might really be able to see because one side firing differently than the other. And this, we become aware of how we have imbalances in the body. Maybe you're pretty balanced. And then relax and notice the muscles softening. We'll do that one more time. Little flex to the feet, press the edges down, drag the feet apart. Hold for a breath. And relax. Very good. Okay, bring those knees back up. And then we're going to grab our strap <clears throat> and we're going to take the strap around the legs so that they're around the inner thighs. So strap around the inner thighs. I'm sorry, uh, not inner thighs, <clears throat> a middle thigh. <laughs> so that would be, I don't know how we would do that around the inner thigh. So around the middle thigh. And then adjust the strap so that your feet and knees are about hips distance apart. And then, <coughs> excuse me a second. <coughs> Make sure that your strap has a very secure, um, a secure loop so that when you press your legs apart, the strap doesn't fall apart. If it doesn't stay together, you might need to hold the tail. And if you hold the tail, it'll keep it from um, spreading. So we don't, we want that resistance. We don't want the strap to spread apart. So feet hips distance, strap around the middle thigh, good secure strap, and now press your legs out into the strap. And when we press the legs out into the strap, the outer leg muscles are going to engage a little bit more because they're trying to kind of 
there's a boundary there. The strap is preventing us from just flopping those knees apart. Hold it for one more breath, feeling that outer leg engagement, and then relax. Okay, now we're gonna try it with the legs overhead. So bring the knees into the chest, take the legs up, strap, maybe you need to tighten it a little bit. We're gonna widen the legs out so they're about outer hips distance. So if we were standing, we wouldn't be in the wide leg pose yet. We'd be about maybe in a wide tadasana. Flex your feet and then take a look at your feet and see, like, are they even? Do they kind of turn in, turn out? Can you make your feet even? And then keep your lower back pressing into the ground. Press your legs out into the strap, and maybe you're going to need to hold your tail. And then notice those outer leg muscles engaging. So when we come into a wide leg forward fold, if we can engage these outer legs, it might make the pose a little easier to fold. Okay, relax, bring those feet down for a moment, take a breath. <clears throat> now we're gonna try it again with the legs up, but we're gonna make the strap a little wider now. So it's a lot easier to do these kind of wide leg positions here versus when we're standing, because it's a lot more strain in our legs and our lower back. So bring those legs up again. Now we're going to take that strap a little wider. So now maybe we need outer mats distance apart. And then make sure your tail is nice and secure, your buckles secure. Flex your feet. Make those feet even. So if you were standing, would you be on your pinky edge of your feet or collapsing? <clears throat> Can we get that even? And then press out into the strap. Press out and feel those outer leg muscles engaging. Hold it there one more breath. And then release. All right, slide the strap off. <clears throat> and we're going to take the buckle out of the strap. I'm at the, the loop out of the strap. I don't think I'm awake yet this morning. Take the loop out of the strap. So that you can have your two tails. And then let's take the right leg straight up toward the ceiling. And take the strap around your right foot. <clears throat> Okay, walk your hands up your strap so that you can straighten your arms, but keep your shoulders relaxed. So don't walk up too high that your shoulders lift off the ground. And then flex your foot, spread your toes out, reach up through your heel. And we're just going to take a breath or two there, but stretch for the back of the leg. <clears throat> All right. Now we're gonna take that strap into the right hand, hold up nice and high and start to open that leg slowly out to the side. <clears throat> Reach through your heels, spread your toes. If it's comfortable, straighten the other leg. So left leg out. Reach through both heels if that other leg's straight. Otherwise, just reach through your right heel and extend through the legs. Imagine your leg bones growing longer. And create some length in the tissue. And then let's go ahead and bring that leg back up. Hold the strap in both hands and just point and flex your foot a few times against the resistance of the strap. So you give a little pull to the strap. So open up that back chain of fascia in the foot, in the back of the calf, Achilles tendon. 
Okay, let's release and go to the other side. Take your strap around your left foot, extend it up straight. Flex the foot, spread the toes. Hold for a couple of breaths. Be aware of your knee joints a lot today. So even if you're super flexible, I would say keep a micro bend in your knee. Uh, those of you who have tightness in the back chain are gonna do more than a micro bend, but always keep a little bend in the joint. It's gonna help keep the muscles engaged and keep us from wearing and tearing on that joint. Now, strap comes into the left hand, Start to slowly open that leg out to the side. Maybe you're gonna straighten the right leg. And then reach through both heels. Imagine you're growing your leg bones longer away from your torso. Spread the toes out, open the soles of your feet. And then slowly bring it back up. Hold the tail in both hands, and then we'll do our point and flex against the resistance of the strap. Okay, release. Both feet flat, take a breath. We're gonna do one more thing here on our back, then we're gonna um, come on up. <clears throat> So now we're gonna take the strap around both feet and both legs up, flex both feet. And then making sure you feel like your spine is nice and neutral. You're kind of pressing down a little bit into your lower back, which will engage your lower core. And we're gonna bend the knees. So bend the knees, pull the heels down toward your backs of your legs. And now push the feet up and go slow and then try not to lock the knees. So we keep a little micro bend. Good, now widen the feet a little bit. So maybe about hips distance or before I had them together. Then we'll do that again. We're gonna bend the knees. Maybe give a little squeeze here. Let's so activate your hamstrings. And then slowly push up, slow, slow, slow. Feel those muscles working. And then try not to lock the knee joints. Okay, now go outer hips distance. Again, lower backs pressing down. Flex the feet, spread the toes, and then bend the knees. Give a little squeeze to those hamstrings. Activate them as long as they don't cramp on you. And then slowly, slowly re-extend. Push your heels up toward the ceiling. Now hold it here. And try to pull your strap apart with your feet. So again, it's isometric. We have a slight bend in the knee to protect them. The lower back's pressing down. And we're trying to pull the strap apart with our feet. It's very strengthening for the legs. Okay, stay in position, but relax for a moment. Maybe you wanna shake your hands out if you're getting crampy in your hands. Now we're gonna go even wider. So now maybe wider than your mat. We're not gonna bend here. We're just gonna keep those legs straight. With that micro bend, spread the toes, lower backs pressing down, and we're gonna try and pull our feet apart Feel those outer leg muscles engaging. So really our body should be working synergistically together with all the muscles working to support your muscular uh, skeletal system. But a lot of times we have muscles that are sleepy, muscles that are overworking, and then we get pain and imbalance. So here we're learning to engage those outer legs. All right, slowly bring those feet back up, release your strap, and give your knees a hug into your chest. Let's rock a little bit. So we did a lot of preparation there. And now let's go ahead and roll to our side and come on up into a seated posture. Okay. 
And I hate to make you do this, but we're gonna put the loop back in our strap because we are gonna use it a few times today. So put your loop back in. And we're gonna start with about outer hips distance, how big that is. And we're gonna slip it over the legs. Have your buckle kind of in the middle. And your feet are kind of like when we do um, reverse tabletop feet in front of you. So make your belt as tight as you need to be to have your knees about hips distance. And then hands behind you on the floor when you've got that. I know the belt stuff always <laughs> takes so much time. Remember last week in class, we had, we had a belt situation on Friday. Okay, so strap around middle thigh region again. <clears throat> Press your feet down. Press your arms down and open your collarbones. Now try to press your legs out into the belt and feel those outer legs engaging again. You can stay here or come up into reverse tabletop and press those legs out. So we're working today a little bit more focused on that outer legs. And then come on back down. Again, you can just stay on the floor pressing out or one more round of reverse tabletop. I know some of you guys don't have the strap yet. If you want to just do it without, that's okay. Don't worry. When you're ready, one more time. Press out. And for me, that makes even that pose feel a little more comfortable to have that strength in the legs. Okay, take the strap off. Keep that loop in it. And we'll come into tabletop position. So I just wanted to get one more opportunity with those thighs. Okay. So tabletop position, and we're not gonna go right into cat cows. So this week we're also working on isolating the rolling moving of the sit bones of the pelvis. So we're gonna isolate the lower body. Bring your attention to your sit bones, your pelvis, your tailbone. And as you inhale, just keeping the upper body still, tip your sit bones up. And you get a dip in your lower back. Then tip your sit bones down and round your lower back. Keep your upper body stable and do a few cycles. So when we're doing a forward fold, we need to be able to rotate the pelvis. And a lot of us are a little stuck there because the muscles all around the legs tend to be tight. We might have that tightness on the inner thighs or that uh, the external rotators are weak, the core muscles are weak. Now incorporate your full cat cow. So lift the head and chest as you lift your sit bones, and then head comes down, tailbone comes down, round your back. And we'll do a few more rounds like that. Still with that awareness of the pelvis, tipping forward, tipping up, and then tipping down. Last one. <clears throat> and then we'll find our way into a child's pose. If it's comfortable for you, go for a wide knee child's pose. So wide in the knees. Move the hips back, let the head come down. Maybe you want to stack your um, hands under your forehead. And let's take another breath there. All right. Now come back up into tabletop position. Knees are under your hips. Let's walk the hands forward and come into puppy pose. So start out with your head up, tip your sit bones a little up, and then let your chest come toward the floor. Now this is hard on your shoulders, 
put your arms down and put your head on your hands. What I want you to focus on is your upper spine moving in. Because that's an important piece of this forward fold. We don't want that rounding in our upper back. So get the upper spine to move in. Keep the arms active if your arms are straight. So firm the arms. Last breath. And then go ahead and walk it back in. And we'll take the blanket off of your mat if you have one down. All right, so I'm gonna come up to stand. And if you wanna come through down dog, you can, or you can go right up to stand, keep your strap nearby. We're gonna be using that again. And we'll come on up. I think I need to adjust my camera. I feel like I'm cut off. One second, guys. I had this set up pretty well. I feel like I can't see, <laughs> I'm sorry. But you know what, I'm gonna just, so you won't be able to see my feet right now. I'm gonna move it up a little bit. See if that works. I have it all set up, but now it seems like it's not right. Okay, so coming into mountain pose, this is gonna bug me, I feel like I can't. All right, hold on one more second. <laughs> I'm gonna move I could this see back. all of you, Deanna. Can you? Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. All right. I think it's just because I have this shadow. It looks to me like my head's cut off, but if you guys can see me, I'm good. <laughs> so we'll stand in mountain pose for a moment. Root down into your feet and engage your legs. So this is important. As I mentioned, the hamstrings and the, the quadriceps, they're reciprocal muscles. So we have to learn to engage our quads. So press your feet down, firm your thighs, and zipper up your quadriceps. So as if you're trying to lift your quadriceps up. Good. And then inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Keep that little bend in your knees. Come up halfway. Stay in halfway lift, hands on thighs. Micro bend the knees and then move your sit bones and your booty back and your head and chest forward. Create as much length as you can and then fold forward again. Keep a little bend in those knees. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. Let's do another half sun salutation. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold over your legs. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. And exhale, hands to your heart. Good. Okay, grab that strap. And again, it's gonna go around mid thigh, so have it about that distance, and you're gonna step into the strap. Have the buckle in the middle, and if you can, make sure there's no kinks in your strap. Tighten it up so that your feet are about outer hips distance apart, and then stand in mountain pose. Okay. So first, before we're gonna do a little folding, a little bending, but first let's try to lift just the toes up. So the balls of the feet are down, the heels are down. One of the common misalignments in this pose is that we tend to kind of roll the feet in or out, depending on our body. So I want you to get even on the feet. So if we lift the toes, it strengthens all of the arches of the feet. And we have a big major arch, but we have several arches in the feet. So see if you can get that feeling of the arches lifting and then hands to hips and bend the knees, come into about your halfway lift. And then press your uh, thighs out into the belt. So you feel those outer hips engaging. 
And if you can't feel it, tighten your belt a little bit. Okay, now hands on your thighs. Find that feeling of your booty reaching back, your head reaching forward, press out into the belt. And now from here, go ahead and see if you could fold over your legs. While you press out into the belt and keep the arches of your feet lifting, as you fold, start to let your sit bones lift up and maybe straighten your legs a little bit. And then bend your knees, press yourself all the way up. So I hope you guys can kind of feel this. I wish we were in person today because I know some of the strap stuff can be complicated. But when you press out, it can help you fold forward a little easier. We're going to repeat this with our hands interlaced behind our back. So again, press out into the belt. And then you don't have to lift your toes this time, but see if you can get that feeling of your inner arches not collapsing. Squeeze your shoulders back. So we activate those upper back muscles. And then bend the knees a little bit. Start to hinge forward. Come into your halfway lift shape. Now pause there and really lift your shoulders. Get those upper spine muscles engaged. Some of you are gonna stay here, press out into the belt. Some of you are gonna fold. Now as you fold, start to lift your sit bones up as your head goes down, it's like a lever. And then lift your shoulders. Good, bend your knees, press in your feet, come all the way up. It's hard work, yes. <laughs> okay, take a couple breaths, recover. So we can straighten the legs by doing what we're doing, by kind of lifting the sit bones, engaging the legs, or we can just press our knees back. Press the knees back, and what do we do? We jam those knees, we tend to thrust our pelvis forward, and we're really more out of alignment. So by doing it this way, it's a little more mindful and it's safer for the knee joints. Okay, take the belt off. We are gonna come back to it again. Straighten this out. Okay. Let's step the feet apart wide. And just pause here. Turn the toes so that your feet are pointing straight ahead. So you have those parallel feet. And then hands on your hips. Press your feet down until you feel your leg muscles engage. Zipper up your quadriceps and firm your thighs. So when the knees are bent, we, it's a lot harder to get those thighs to engage. So we're just going to practice it here with straight legs. Now, a lot of you are not going to be able to do straight legs when we fold. That's okay. Hold that one more breath. Okay. From here, turn your right leg out so that your toes point to the short edge of your mat. And press down into the big toe mount of your foot. Press down into your left heel. And when you press in your left heel, maybe you feel that outer leg muscle engage. Now from here, tip your pelvis toward the back foot and start to hinge forward toward your front knee. Keep that knee a slight bend so we're not locking that knee joint out. And just pause there and push into the foot. See if maybe you can feel some engagement in that leg. So it's like halfway to triangle pose. Good, come back up. We're going to do it again. We'll come into full triangle. Press into the ball mound of the right toe, the heel of the left foot. Tip your pelvis toward the left. Tip toward your right. And then bring your right hand down to your shin or a block. Pause there. Press your shin into your hand, your hand into your shin and turn your chest open. Unless you have a block, then press your hand into the block. Press down through your feet. I want you to feel your leg muscles engaging. Good, and then come back up and we'll bend the right knee into warrior two. 
Very good. Straighten the leg, step it back in, shake it out a little bit. And then let's try that on the other side. So this is good preparation for our peak pose. Step out wide. How wide you go is negotiable. So I've mentioned this before that if we go too wide, we're gonna feel unstable. If we're too narrow, we might feel a little more stuck in our body. So you gotta find that sweet spot for yourself. Okay, turn the left leg out, pointing the toes to the short edge of your mat. And then press down into that big toe mount, press down into your right heel, and then tip your pelvis toward the right. And keep that micro bend in the knee. You're just gonna go part way. That's it. So we wanna keep these sides of the waist long and then slowly come up. And we're gonna do that again. This time come in a full triangle. Press in that big toe, the back heel and start to come into your triangle. Hips are shifting toward the right. Hand comes down to your shin or a block. Good, and then press your shin and hand into each other and rotate your chest open. And press down into your feet. Feel those leg muscles active. Good, and then slowly come back up into warrior two. This time, bend the knee. And straighten the leg, parallel your feet. Let's step it back in and shake it all out. Good. Okay, back to our friend, the strap. Your legs might be feeling this, all this work in the legs. We're gonna go wider with the strap now. So we're gonna go not to a full prasarita padottanasana yet, so we're gonna go, let's say, halfway between mountain pose and prasarita. Okay, so maybe, let's see, I'm gonna tighten mine up a little bit more. So let's say like outer mats distance apart. And then parallel your feet. Tighten up the strap so you feel a little resistance. And we'll put hands on hips. I'll give you guys another moment there. Okay. So press down into your feet, firm up your quadriceps, zipper them up. You're lifting your kneecaps up, engaging the legs. Hold that one more breath. Good, now from here, bend the knees a little bit. Press out into your strap and start to hinge forward from your hip creases. So we don't wanna bend here at the waist, we wanna bend at those hip creases. Come into that halfway lift shape and press out into your belt. And if your belt is getting bigger, hold onto the tail, that'll help. And then slowly come back up. So we're just gonna do that halfway lift. Now grab your set of blocks. <clears throat> and we're gonna place the blocks in front of us. And come back into that same position. So we're not super wide. All right. Press down into your feet, firm up your quads, and then bend the knees, hinge from your hips, and bring your hands to your blocks. Now keep those blocks on the high level, so arms are straight. <clears throat> Roll your sit bones toward the back, head toward the front, lengthening your spine, and press out into your belt. Notice where the weight is in your feet. So we don't want it all the way in the pinky edge. We don't want it all the way in the big toe. Can you find balance in your feet? Press out into the belt. And some of you are gonna start to fold forward. So you might lower your blocks 
or bring your hands to the floor. Press out into the belt and start to lift your sit bones up and maybe walk your hands under your shoulders. Keep your elbows isometrically hugging towards each other like you have a block between your elbows. And maybe those elbows start to bend. Take your time, listen to your body. Press out into that belt. And then let's release, come back up onto your blocks. Heel toe your feet in. And now let's take that strap off. Come on up. And maybe walk it out, shake it out a little bit. So kind of when we press out of that belt, it creates a little space here in the hips and it makes that folding forward a little easier, at least for me. I hope you're feeling it. But sometimes you're just feeling that work in the legs and you're not really noticing the forward folding aspect. Now, let's go a little wider if you can. No strap. Feet parallel. And this time we're gonna interlace our hands behind our back. And then squeeze those shoulder blades back, just like we did earlier. Press down into your feet, feel the strength of your legs. One more breath right here. And then we're gonna bend the knees a little bit and start to hinge from your hips so you're not rounding your spine. So if you round your spine, you've gone too far. Go halfway, press in your feet, Imagine you're pressing out into an imaginary belt and lift your shoulders. Some of you might start to come further. Your blocks are there. So if at any point you wanna release your hands, use them. You can always release hands to the floor. Keep folding if it feels appropriate for you. And are you rounding your back? Find a little back bend in your body, so a little lift of your chest. That's it, good. Maybe you're straightening your legs, lifting your sit bones a little more. And then release your hands down to the floor or your blocks. And heel toe your feet back in. And come all the way up to stand. Very good, very good. Okay, so that's about what we're gonna do with that pose because we're running out of time. So go ahead and set your blocks off to the side and we're gonna come down to sit. Um, I just wanna ask a quick question. I forgot. <laughs> I can't remember. Did I say we were gonna do an hour and 15 or an hour? Does anyone remember? Just an hour, okay. All right, I was thinking of making it longer since we were on Zoom, but I guess I didn't. So we're gonna have to end in like 10, 15 minutes. All right, let's sit up on a pillow or a blanket, whatever you've got. And we'll need the strap again. Sorry. My kittens are going crazy right outside the door here. They wanna come in here so bad. <laughs> So we're going to take the loop out of your strap one last time, I promise. And we're going to go into our wide leg position again. We're going to take the strap around the feet. And if your strap isn't long enough to do that, then you're going to skip the strap. I like to wrap my hands around the strap so that I have a good grip if your strap's super long. And then we're just gonna find the tops of the sit bones. Point your toes up, point your kneecaps up. And then press your thighs down, lift your chest, and rotate your elbows just a little forward and up to open the collarbones in the chest without pressing your ribs forward. So can you find a nice straight spine? Press your thighs down, and now we're gonna try and pull the strap apart with your feet. You might keep a little micro bend to protect your knees. So feel that work in the legs as you try to pull your strap apart. 
Hold that one more breath. Good, and then release. Let go of the strap. Set that off to the side. And we're gonna bring our hands onto our hips. Okay, now we're gonna bend the knees just a little bit and practice tipping the pelvis forward and back, okay? So from here, take an inhale, tip the pelvis a little forward, you're not gonna go far, and then tip back, rock toward the backs of your sit bones, rock toward the fronts of your sit bones, and just do a little rocking motion here. That's it. Okay, now try to straighten the legs if you can. Some of you, it's better to keep them bent, that's okay. And then rock a few more rounds with the legs straight if that's accessible for you. When we come into a forward fold, we're gonna go into this forward tipped position. Okay, come back to neutral, be on the tops of your sit bones. And now bring your hands in front of you. Good, walk them out a little bit. Don't go super deep yet. Pause there, keep your toes pointing up. And now start to roll your sit bones back behind you. And when you do that, you might feel more stretch here through your inner thighs. Roll your sit bones back and maybe you're gonna stay right there. Those of you who can might start to walk yourself a little more forward. But what's happening in your spine? Are you rounding your spine a lot? If you are, better to stay up higher. If you can keep the integrity of the spine, maybe you'll come a little more forward. What happens if you press your thighs down? Your legs are gonna engage. Maybe that might allow you to tip a little bit more. What happens if you press out into an imaginary strap and press your thighs down? Maybe you can go a little farther. So it's called active range of motion. We're strengthening as we stretch. Okay, slowly start to bring yourself back up from wherever you landed. And use your hands, bring those legs together, and we'll come onto our backs. Now, if you guys can see Brian's out there, he's wearing his cow print pajama pants. So I don't know if he knows you can probably see him out there. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna come on our backs. Maybe you want a pillow under your head. And we're gonna just bring those knees in for a hug. Just take a little rocking on your lower back. And we didn't do any twisting today, so I think that would be really nice to add a twist here. If we had a little more time, there's a you know, we do the twist in the Prasarita Padatanasana as well. So let's go ahead and bring those feet down. And take your right leg, cross it over your left leg. No space. And then shift your hips over to the right and drop your legs over to the left. Maybe you want some support under your legs. So you can put a little blanket or some blocks. We're gonna stretch out that outer hip after all the work we did today, engaging it. Maybe you want to look over your right shoulder. And we'll take a few breaths in the twist. So we work these outer legs a lot today with all that pressing out into the belt. And that helps strengthen that outer hips. And we also kind of work through the area of the IT bands. We strengthen that area can help us kind of not compensate in other areas. So we're kind of waking up some muscles that maybe were a little dormant, maybe weren't firing for us. 
So I'll just relax here for about maybe three or four more breaths. Breathing softly in your belly. Let's do one more here. All right. And then slowly start to unwrap the top leg. Bring that foot to the floor. And then even yourself out. <clears throat> Let's try that on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and take the Left leg on top of the right, shift your hips over to the left, and then drop your knees over to the right, maybe look to your left. And then again, noticing that outer hip stretch. Find that soft breath, I'm starting to let the shoulders relax down. One more breath here. And then let's go ahead and make our way back to the center, even yourself out. And then cross your right leg over your left leg again. No twist this time. Let's just bring the knees into the chest. And then feet go toward opposite sides of the mat, like the Gomukhasana. Maybe you're gonna hold your knees, your shins, maybe your ankles or your feet, and pull the knees in toward the chest. And then that's another outer hip stretch. Maybe rock it side to side. Okay, let's go ahead and unwind and switch sides. So left leg comes over, cross at the inner thigh, bring those knees into the chest, that might be enough, or reach and hold wherever you can. So it might be shins, it might be ankles, it might be feet. Keep the lower back down if you can, we're not rounding it up. So press the lower back down and then maybe a little rock side to side. So we got a two, a two week hip series here. Next week we're gonna also work on hips, but it's gonna be a little different. We're gonna be focusing on internal rotation of the hip joint. Um, so it's gonna be a, a different kind of practice. We'll learn more about that next week. Okay, unwind, bring those feet down. And let's see, I think we're about out of time. If you wanna do a quick happy baby, feel free. And then let's find Shavasana. We're just gonna end about five minutes late. So take your time, add any props, layers that you might like to have for your resting pose. So remembering that when we do these forward folds, if we're tighter in that back chain, it can be a little tricky for the lower back. So if your lower back feels a little bit, you know, aggravated by what we did, I would say put something under your knees. You know, have a folded blanket, rolled up blanket, or a bolster. And then coming into relaxation. 
Let your shoulders soften. Think about the muscles along your spine. Let them soften into the ground. All that work we did to extend the spine, work those muscles as well. And soften through your inner and outer legs. That was a big target for today, as well as the, the hamstrings and the quads. So the whole circumference of your thighs. Nice thing about working our muscles is that we tire them out and then we can relax a little better. Especially when we work with the legs. A lot of leg work can be very grounding. And it can help us become a little more at ease in our Shavasana. Soft breath in your belly. So I'm gonna share a final reading as you guys continue to rest. And this is written by poet David White. And it is called Rest. Rest is the conversation between what we love to do and how we love to be. Rest is the essence of giving and receiving, an act of remembering, imaginatively and intellectually, but also physiologically. To rest is to give up on the already exhausted will as the prime motivator of endeavor with its endless outward need to reward itself through goals. To rest is to give up on worrying and fretting and the sense that there is something wrong with the world unless we are there to put it right. To rest is to fall back literally or figuratively from outer targets and shift the goal not to an inner static bullseye, an imagined state of perfect stillness, but to an inner state of natural exchange. The template of natural exchange is the breath, the autonomic giving and receiving that forms the basis and measure of life itself. We are rested when we are living we are a living exchange between what lies inside and what lies outside. When we are an intriguing conversation between the world, we are rested. When we let things alone, let ourselves alone to do what we do best, to breathe as the body intended us to breathe, to walk as we were meant to walk, to live with the rhythm of a house and a home, giving and taking. When we give and take in an easy foundational way, we are closest to our easiest sense of self and closest to that self when we are most rested. To rest is not self-indulgent. To rest is to prepare to give the best of ourselves. And perhaps most importantly, to arrive at a place where we are able to understand what we have already been given. Rested, we are ready for the world, but not held hostage by it. If rested, we care again for the right things and the right people in the right way. In rest, we reestablish the goals that make us more generous, more courageous more of an invitation, someone we want to remember and someone others would want to remember too. When we are rested, we are at our best selves. So we'll take a couple moments and notice how you feel. 
the end of this forward folding practice. When we invert in that way, we bring a lot of blood flow to the head. We bring the earth to the head. It can be really calming to do forward folds. So take some time to deepen your breath. Move gently. Invite in just those gentle movements. And then take your time. When you're ready, you can move a little more and come over onto your side for a pause. And make sure you have that pause on your side. And after you've been on your side for a breath or two, go ahead and make your way up into a seated posture. We'll sit up nice and tall, open the collarbones, lift your chest. And we'll bring our palms together in front of the heart space. And take an inhale, and as you exhale, bow into your heart. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. Namaste. All right, thank you guys. We got one little visitor here. <laughs> this is my little Tinkerbell. How cute. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to go run around. She loves to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys stay safe and warm. And hopefully I'll see most of you guys in person next week. Um, how did you guys do? Any questions? No, it was no. good. No, it was, yeah. Yeah. You guys can good. see me and hear me okay back there? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, it's just, there's a big glare today on my screen. So it was hard for me to see, like, I couldn't tell what you guys were seeing. So if I seemed a little confused or off, that was why. But it seems like you guys were able to follow. So good. Everything went well. Thank